Hello all, um, I am here to update you on my progress with uh, six millimeter corn fields. So uh, this is kind of what I've decided on, um, which I'll get to in a second, but I'm pretty happy with how this looks. Uh, I wanted to just share a little bit about how I kind of got there, uh, some experiments that I did, and uh, just what I learned in the process. So um, what I first started with was this uh, uh, fake turf, fake grass. You can get it at Walmart. Uh, I guess not Walmart, but uh, Home Depot, wherever. Um, Lowe's. I bought this off of Amazon. Um, this was something that uh, I've seen other guys use on, on YouTube to make their stuff. Um, most notably, I kind of saw it on um, Little Wars TV and kind of the Alter of Freedom website. Um, I, uh, I got it in... I'm just not terribly happy with it because it's uh, it's not as tall and it's not taller than uh, the infantry, six millimeter infantry. So I like my cornfields to be uh, fully grown, fully tasseled out. So I guess uh, this stuff could be used as some uh, great fields, maybe cotton field or uh, just a, a, a young growing cornfield that's not fully uh, ripened up and tasseled yet. But um, you know, not too bad. One thing I found out about this stuff is oftentimes it comes in a roll or even when you buy it um, in a sheet, it, uh, it's fairly matted down. And so what I did was I cut it into shape. I put it on a uh, cookie sheet and then I put it in the oven at uh, warm temperature. So below 200 for sure. Like I think it was like around 170 actually. And I left it there for half hour or so and it uh, flattened out pretty nicely. And then it also made these stand up. So that's a little tip that I have just from experimenting with it. So I might do something in the future with this, but uh, I'm not gonna use it with, for my cornfields. So uh, instead I tried to think about what other materials might be out there. Uh, this is kind of your standard um, mat that everybody uses for wheat fields and stuff like that in 28 millimeter. Um, you can see it's just the rubberized bottom with the uh, um, wheat or I don't know what it is. Just some kind of uh, material uh, that's pressed in there, uh, tightly bound, uh, very tight, very um, even. So you got to do a little bit of playing around with it to get it to look better. Um, but just some quick experiments that I did with this stuff. You can see uh, it just had some small tiles. Uh, so I wanted to get the idea of there being a cornfield. I uh, played around with this. This is just a little too um, uniform. It's all the same. It's just spray painted with some lines in there, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, this same thing, but I went over it with some uh, yellow uh, paint and that kind of uh, subdued the lines a bit. Um, this, I went back in and kind of experimented with it a little bit more and I actually ended up plucking it out so it wasn't quite as like flat and even. So those are kind of what led me to, to this point. So here I have this and you can see that I've already started the process on this. Um, so what you do is you come in with a pair of scissors. Uh, after you got this, cut the shape. I cut this to shape on uh, my bandsaw. Um, and then you trim up the edge, you get all these little wispies out, uh, and then all you do is I take an old pair of nippers and then I come in on the edge, start on the edge first, and I just pull and get some of that out. And I just uh, kind of go in and do a little, a little bit more, uh, just so it's not as even on the edge. Uh, it takes a good amount of force. And then on the center part, I come in and just kind of rip some of that out in the middle as well. Sometimes there's even holes that get created when you do this. It's no big deal. I kind of like them. Uh, look a little more natural to me. Um, so that's kind of what you, you start to see um, when you do that. Nice frayed edge. And then to uh, kind of get it even more clean what I do is I take a just a simple little torch that I have and I use that to catch the edges on fire it burns up the wispies 
and then I will come into the center and burn the top, give it a little, uh, take all those little tall ones out, hit the holes, widen them out a little bit more, and I just do that all the way around after I've got everything plucked. Uh, obviously, it burns a little bit. Probably want to do it outside. I'm inside, so my house smells a little bit like burning grass. But um, this is kind of the process that I go through. I do that all the way around, and I end up with something that looks like this. Um, so you can see the edges are uh, fairly well uh, uneven. Um, this one's probably a little little much for my taste, but uh, it works. You can see that there's some holes that have gone all the way through. Um, and uh, I think it just uh, makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. So after I get that all done, I take a piece of, um, well, <laughs> the thing that I have finished, and I, I go and I get uh, a can of uh, camo spray paint, dark green flat, and I just spray paint it dark green. I uh, get it all covered nice and well. Um, takes quite a bit of spray paint to get down in those edges. After that, I then take some acrylic paint and I start to dry brush the edges uh, and dry brush all the way around. I do two different colors of green, um, one a little bit duller, one a little bit brighter, and that starts to make uh, the texture kind of pop out. It starts to make it look a little more fieldy. And then last thing I do, uh, well, not last thing, but the next thing I do is I take this and then I just go over and dry brush a little bit of yellow on top of it. And then the yellow, of course, starts to make it look like it's tasseling out. Um, so that's a pretty good look as is. But uh, I wanted to give it a sense of some corn rows. And so I uh, made a template out of some plastic uh, cardboard or plastic card that I have. And then I just uh, put the template on top of it and I sprayed it. Uh, this is the template that I have. Um, you can kind of see, just lay it on top and then I just spritz over top of it. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, a little bit of work, but not too bad. This uh, template, like I said, is plastic uh, sheet. Um, I started off up here, you can see it's pretty gnarly up here. I started off with trying to take a Dremel tool with one of those little blades on it, um, round blades and cutting in here, but it was just, it was too messy. It was mel melting the plastic and it just really wasn't doing well. So what I did was I took it out onto the bandsaw and that gave me a nice fine edge, um, but the edge is not uh, very straight and it's not uh, crisp either. So it doesn't give you a super strong line on there, which I like. Um, so I, I just cut all the way um, up there and then I came in with another piece of plastic card and just uh, model glued that on there. So this is the template I use. All you do is you just lay it on top of your field like I said. So overall I am pretty happy with how this looks. I'm happy with uh, the size of the figures and the scale. Uh, to me this this kind of says um, cornfield as far as the the size and the scale goes um, so i'm i'm happy with it with this i had i bought one of these mats i think it was like 12 bucks or something like that at home depot and then i got uh i'm gonna guess maybe 10 fields about this size out of there something like that varying size so pretty happy with how it all came out um so i'm really looking forward to getting into it and getting more of these guys painted up. Um, so hopefully I can get them on the table and I can see those cornfields in action. Uh, have a good one and I hope that helped you guys. We'll talk to you later.